In this video we're going to take a look at the baby crypt challenge, you'll hack the box. It's an easy reversing challenge and the description says give me your key and take what's yours. So we'll download the file first of all and take a copy of it to our local directory. The name suggests that there's going to be some encryption involved. But let's go and do some basic file checks. So the first thing we'll do is check the file type and see that it's a 64-bit executable. It has Pi enabled, so every time the program loads, it'll load at a different memory location. It's not stripped, so debugging symbols haven't been stripped. We'll be able to see function names and things like that. And since it's executable, let's make it executable so that we can run it. And just before we run it, let's have a look at the strings. So we'll look for strings greater than 10 characters. And we can see here that it's going to ask us for a key. There's no sign of any obvious password here, though. We've just seen a lot of function names and um, program sections and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and run the program, see what happens. So if we run the program, we can see that it asks us for a key as we expected. Let's just enter in some characters and then it prints out a message. Let's try and enter some different characters there and see if we get a different message, which we do. See if we can enter it without any characters. So if we enter it in with, noth with nothing, we get the same message back each time. There's nothing randomized about it. Um, but obviously, depending on our input, we're getting a different output from it. So let's try and run Ltrace as well and see if we can see what's happening. If we enter in a key and we don't. So in our, in our last example, we saw the string compare happening here and we were able to take the string from it, but we're not getting anything useful there. So let's go and set up a Geodra project and we can have a look at the decompiled code and try and work out what's going on. I'll create a new project here. I'll speed through the process because it takes a little while. Okay, so with Geodra open, we have our decompiler on the right, our, our assembly code here, and let's go straight into the functions. So we know that this isn't stripped, so we're going to be able to find a main function here. So that's what we're going to want to start off. Let's go and take a look at the code. And immediately we can see that we have some variables declared. We have some values being assigned right here. So we can go and have a look at those. If we highlight the the hex values, we'll see what it translates to in, in, in char, which is what we're going to be interested in but it doesn't in any way resemble a flag at the moment. So let's have a closer look at the code. So right before these values are assigned here, we can see that it asks us for a key and we have the fgets call. So it's fgets is reading in four bytes from the standard input from us on the command line into this underscore underscore s variable. And then we have a loop down here which is assigned. We have the counter assigned at zero and it's gonna loop through to one a in hex. So this is base 16, so we can say a times 1, which is 10 times 1, plus 1 times 16, so 26. So it's going to loop through 25 times, and each time it loops through, it's taking a byte from local 38. So you can see this here. It's taking a byte from this location, plus the index of the loop. So it's going to loop through each byte, essentially, here. And each time the index goes up, it's going to get to another byte. And what it's actually doing with each byte that it grabs, it's going to assign it a new value, and the value is going to be um, itself XORed with one of the bytes from our input. So, for example, in the first iteration, it's going to grab 6F, and if we provided our key as ABCD, it would XOR the first, it would XOR this with A, and then it would get. Um, the result, this is using a modulus operation of three to loop through each different um, byte in our key. So it's basically going to go through all of these values anyway and XOR them with the values in our key. And then once it gets to the end, it's going to print out this this value after the XOR has happened. So that's exactly what we've been observing in the program whenever we run it. And this is not related to the challenge, but just in case anybody's interested, you see the stack fail, ch stack check fail call we have here. This is essentially this value which is assigned at the beginning is checked at the end of the function to make sure that there hasn't been a, a buffer overflow. So if if um, if there was a buffer overflow vulnerability here and somebody attempted one, then they would need to make sure that this value, which is assigned at the beginning on the stack, also uh, equals what it was assigned at the beginning when the program ends otherwise it'll 
it'll basically crash out. And you can verify that with the checksec program. So if we did checksec file and pass that in, we'll see that basically all the protections are enabled here. You see them all in red. So we have stack canaries which are found, which are these checks here to make sure that the canary isn't over overwritten. Um, we have NX enabled, meaning we wouldn't be able to inject shellcode. We have Pi enabled, which I mentioned earlier, so the program will keep all load at different memory addresses each time. And we have full rel row as well, which means that the areas of the program, like the global offset table, are, won't be writable. Uh, not related to this um, challenge, but if you're interested in moving on to the Pwn videos, or if you've already been through some Pwn challenges, uh, you may f you may find that of interest. So we only need to find a 4 byte key, it wouldn't be too difficult for us to brute force this, just set up a script to loop through um, the different possible combinations of keys and then if it finds the hack the box string at the beginning then we know that we've got the flag and we'll print it out. But we'll go and have a look at how we can just solve this by focusing on the XOR operation. So let's go and just get a little bit of a background on XOR for anybody who's not too familiar or just um, needs a refresher. So I'll leave a link to this article in the description. It's quite short. I didn't really dig around too much for it. I just wanted to give a brief overview of what the XOR is all about um, before we continue. So as it says here, an exclusive OR operation returns true if both the inputs are opposite. So one false and one true, otherwise it returns false. So we have a table here. If you get zero, if you have two bits and they're both zero, then the output is going to be zero if you put it through the XOR gate. And if you have two ones, and put it through you're also going to get a zero. The only time you're going to get a one out of the XOR gate is if you give it a zero and a one in either order. So as it mentions here the XOR operation can be used to encrypt and decrypt messages. It's a symmetric encryption technique and they also note here that if the key is the same size of the message and truly secret and random then it's impossible to crack. So this is known as a one-time pad but the issue is if you have access to multiple messages, you can use those to um, work out the key, which is exactly what we're going to essentially find out here. So let's go through a basic example. So I'm going to go convert some binary here. You go to cybershare for ascii to hexcom to do this quite quickly. And let's have some plain text called P. And if we just grab the binary string, I'll open this up in the text editor. and let's get a key as well, just call this K convert that, so we have our two values our plain text, we have our key, in fact let me and if we were to try and get some cipher text now then, say we want to send this message to somebody and we want to do the XOR operation. So we have two zeros here, so that's going to be a zero. We have two ones, that's also going to be a zero. Two more ones, zero. It's only when we have two alternating values that we're going to provide a one. And then we'll provide a one again, and then a zero again, and then one and one. And now we have our ciphertext, we have our key. So if we were to provide this ciphertext to somebody, we, pass, we give them the ciphertext, we give them the key, and then they're able to say, okay, well, if I now take these values and XOR them, so we've got zero, we've got a one, we've got a one, we've got a one, we've got a zero, 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 and then they'll end up with the same plain text that you sent originally. So what's the issue here? Well, the issue is what if somebody has this cipher text and the plain text, but not the key? So because you might think that it would be safe to share these values, but if we were to take the ciphertext and the plain text, and so say we intercepted two messages, one with ciphertext and one with some plain text, we could then say, well, now we're gonna we're gonna work out what what the key is, and then we'll never have to worry about deciphering these messages again. And um, to do that, we'll just do the sa exact same XOR operation. So we'd say zero here. 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, and that's going to retrieve the key. So, how are we going to apply that to this challenge? Well, you may have worked out by now where this is going. We know that the flag that we're trying to retrieve begins with 
hack the box, HTB, and a curly brace. And we know that the key that we need to enter is four bytes. So if we provide our key as hack the box, in fact, let's give it a go. Let me minimize this so it's a little bit clearer. We provide hack the box and then the curly brace and we're expecting it to XOR that and give us um, their XOR in this hack the box with each four bytes of the string. So the first four bytes that it retrieves should be the, the key for the XOR operation. So now if we run this again and pass in the first four bytes that we retrieved and we get back our flag. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.